Alrighty, I was saying that I was going to do a quick walk around of this thing and tell people what I thought of it compared to my street glide. So seeing as it's clean right now, I figured it'd be a good time to get her done. Toby! My dog wants me. Anyway, a couple little features. To get in the fuel, gas cap's hiding in there. There's a little electric door that you have to open here. Push that button. And that remotely opens this to get at the fuel. Got a little glove box up here. That's where you hook up your phone for Apple CarPlay. They include a nice little foam holder for your phone. Mirrors on it work great, no vibrations at all. Dash is easy to read. This one was one of two left in all of Alberta that I managed to get my hands on. It had some shipping damage. This piece here was damaged, they already changed that for me. The speaker grill's got a bit of damage and there's a couple marks on this piece of plastic. They're supposed to be in around the end of June. And then I'll go back and they'll change those out for me. It was either that or wait until next year before I could get one. The engine in these things is pretty much le legendary, reliable as heck. Tons of torque. It's amazing how much torque that motor's got. I got the manual version. I was really curious about getting a dual clutch, but the only dual clutch available was the blue one. And it was the airbag version. So it costs $4,000 more than this one. And the airbag is mounted where that glove box is. And I wasn't willing to give up that glove box for the convenience of the phone being in the front versus in the airbag version. It's mounted inside the tour pack. This seat is absolutely phenomenal. It's a heated seat, rider and passenger, as well as a heated backrest for the passenger. But it is absolutely super comfortable. I've seen people complaining about it online, but everybody's butt's different. But I jumped on this bike brand new and rode it 500 miles home and had zero discomfort. And that was a non-stop ride, just quick stops for gas. So I was in that saddle for like seven hours straight. Passengers got four boards instead of foot pegs. I like the way they fold up and just kind of disappear. It's got fall over protection underneath these things at the front and the rear. There's actually tubular steel bars that if you drop it on its side, that takes the impact instead of the saddlebags or the engine itself. Front suspension isn't conventional forks. It's actually a double wishbone suspension. And the wheel travel, instead of going up and down like forks do, it travels up and down vertically. And because of that suspension setup, when you slam on your brakes, you get next to no brake dive at all. The front end stays up. LED lights all the way around come stock with LED fog lights as well. Electric windshield with memory. which is wherever you had it set when you shut off the bike. Once you start to ride, the windshield will automatically re return to wherever you last had it set. And then as soon as you shut off the bike, it lowers itself back down. The manual version of this, which I got, doesn't have the creep forward, but it does have reverse. So it can slowly back up if you're ever parked in a spot where it's difficult to push the bike back, you just hit that button and you can just walk the bike backwards easily. Uh, center stand, the bike is, the center gravity of this bike is incredibly low. And it's also loaded up like this with a tour pack on it and everything else, weighs the same as a bare bones stock street glide. But it feels so much lighter when you move it around the garage and everything. I just got to put a hand on the handlebar, one of my hands back on the rear grips, and I can back it uphill in into the garage, move it around wherever I want without fear of dropping it. It's very easy to move around. 
where the street glide, I didn't dare move it around without sitting on it first. It just felt the weight is so high in the street glide compared to this. Uh, saddlebags, it's all locked unless you got the key, nothing opens. Push the electric and it just comes down on a little piston. The saddlebags in this are smaller than the street glide, but it's got a massive tour pack which makes up for it. Also in the display, it's just like a car if you leave a door open. completely on that accessory. And over here you got a picture of the motorcycle right now it shows that the side stand is down. If you happen to try and ride off with one of your saddlebags open, let me open the saddlebag, it pops open and shows that you got something open. The same as for the trunk. Navigation on this, I've seen a lot of complaints on it. I'm getting used to it now. I actually like it. It works really well once you get the hang of it. The only feature of it I don't like is once you're underway, you can't move the map around. Like right now I can go in. Let me, here we go. Get out of here. Do, 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 do. Go back, go back. There we go. See, I can scroll around the map here. But once you're driving, you can't scroll around to where you want to go. That feature's locked out, which is a pain in the butt, to put it mildly. Down here. And this part of it here is basically all the same as with uh, the system on the Harley. Audio sources, it comes stock with uh, XM satellite antenna, so you don't have to install it. As long as you got a subscription, it works. So you get that. Uh, AM, FM, Sirius auxiliary and then because I don't have my phone hooked up in it right now it's got Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay works fantastic on this way better than my Harley. On the Harley it was finicky as hell would get me quite pissed off once in a while but with this as long as you hook your phone up last it works rock solid. You stop for gas somewhere shut off the bike turn it back on when you leave everything's exactly where you left it. Where with the Harley a lot of times when I turn it back on to drive again, I would lose my Apple CarPlay and I'd have to go through the whole routine of turning turning everything off, turning things back on to get it working again. Down here in the bottom left, let me go up, uh, start at the top, oops. Shows the outside air temperature, 12 degrees Celsius. Of course, it's got standard as well that you can go to. Or you can show your cruise speed that you've got set. That's my total mileage and kilometers. Shows my trip A and trip B. And the last one shows my current range and kilometers or my front and rear tire pressures. High beams, volume, power window, that's your push to talk if you get a phone call and whatnot, horn, signal lights. That's your source that it was flipping around to go between AM, FM, and whatnot. Home button, the joystick here basically doubles the functions of this one. Goes up and down, angles, enter button, basically all the same. Uh, audio button, that switches between your headsets and the speakers. Heated grips, heated seat, fog lights. Info button shows what radio station you're on, average fuel consumption for both your trips, all that kind of stuff. Passenger heat's controlled by a wheel down here that they can access themselves. 
basically that's in a nutshell. Brakes on this thing are fantastic. It's got dual uh, six piston calipers on the front. This rear tour pack trunk, whatever you want to call it, is rather massive. You can put two full face helmets in there with room to spare. It's got a lot of room. Changing the rear tire, this whole rear fender just unclips out of here. It's got a single sided swing arm, so the wheel's basically the same as like a automotive wheel. You just remove your five lug nuts, roll the tire out from underneath while it's on the center stand. Tire changes on the front too are pretty easy. You just pull off your brake calipers and the front half of the front fender is just held on by two screws on each side. Pull the screws, take off the fender, front tire rolls out. So a lot of things on this, the maintenance is very simple. I did the first service yesterday for the oil change. I think it took, took me all of 15 minutes. It's really quick and easy. But changing the air filter in this thing's a nightmare. It's buried way down under there. So you take off the seat, you gotta strip all the plastics off, take the glove box out. It's about a three hour job to change an air filter on this. So not everything is perfect. I made a quick little list of some of my thoughts between this and riding the street glide. Number one, high winds on the highway, crosswinds. A street glide was rock solid. Winds didn't bother it at all. I'm not saying they're bad on this, but it'll never compare to the stability and winds that the street glide had. Turn that off. Save my battery. Uh, street glide seems to have a little bit better range. Fuel tank on this is 21 liters. The street glide was 23, I believe. And fuel mileage between them are pretty close but I'd give the edge to range to the street glide. Uh, going on long trips, there's a lot more Harley dealers around than Honda dealers. So that's an added piece of security. Fit and finish, paint and whatnot, Harley gets the edge for that. Like their paint is flawless. The paint on this looks really good right now, but I've heard it's soft and scratches easily. And I know the plastics mark easily. You gotta be really careful with the plastics on this thing or you're gonna get them all scratched up. Riding this on the highway, it is so quiet and smooth. Incredible, I love it. And the air management with this fairing, some people don't like the windshield. I'm six foot with a long back and this windshield works great. I just get a little bit of wind fl fluffing my upper arms and shoulders but you're on a bike, you're gonna get some wind. But I got no buffeting around my helmet. I got no air blowing up from underneath that wraps around the fuel tank or anything and hits your helmet from below, none of that. The air management on this wins hands down. Uh, one of the things I dislike with this is for the stereo, the nav and everything else, it's not a touch screen. So you gotta get used to using the buttons on the handlebar when you're driving instead of just poking the screen with your finger. Hopefully one of these days Honda will catch up and get a touch screen. Um, when you are in the nav, when it's showing your current range and fuel usage, it is pretty much dead nuts on. Whereas the Harley, it would be generous saying you're doing better than you're doing or you got more range than you have and as you ride you watch your range is going down faster than the miles you're riding and then when you fuel up at the gas station when it says you've used so much and you get to the gas station you actually used a lot more than it said you did so on this this one's a lot a, a lot more accurate um low low speed handling and whatnot this wins too because of the low center of gravity it feels like you're on a bike half the size you're on. It is just, for such a big bike, it's so, so easy to handle. Uh, the, the leg position on this is not as good as on a Harley because you're 
your feet are mid pegs, not forward pegs. So your knees are bent more and me having bad knees. After 500 miles, I was starting to feel it, but it wasn't really bad. Like when I'm on my FJR or something, that one really hurt my knees. But I got highway pegs coming for this. So it's a mute point because the highway pegs will uh, solve that problem. Uh, tire wear, running Dunlop American Elites, we're getting close to 30,000 K on the street glides. Yeah, it's say about 20,000 miles. This, I've only gone 2,000 kilometers and I've already used one and a half, 30 seconds of tire wear. So I got a feeling this is only going to get about half the tire life that the Harley gets and I haven't been pushing it. So I don't know if I got to go to a different tire or what, but I've always liked Dunlops and that's what's on this. And basically that's about all I've got wrote down. I love the bike. When I was first picking it up, I was kind of ap ap apprehensive if I was doing the right thing or not. A few of my Harley friends won't be happy with me, but I'm happy with me. Absolutely love this thing. The handling is incredible. You can really push this thing hard in the corners and it's stable as can be. Nothing to make it feel nervous or anything. The street glide at highway speeds, you know, going 60, 70, 80 miles an hour down the highway, the handlebars were really light and it felt really flickable. But when you pushed it hard in a corner, the back end would start to feel nervous, especially if you hit a bump. Where this at highway speeds, the steering feels heavier, but it out handles my street glide day and night. Anyway, I've been going on for like 17 minutes now, yattering away. My throat's getting dry. It's that time of year with allergies. So we'll cut this off and I'll upload it onto YouTube and post a link to Facebook for anyone that wants to see it. I'm out.